Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Time for Grace. This is our fifth weekly session. We are here, we are together, and we are gathered to remember that this is a time for grace. This is a time of change and uncertainty, but we, we can hold that alongside God's love and care. And we've been inviting you to join in the prayer practice of grace each week and helping you understand some new and interesting and hopefully helpful ways to grow closer to God. Tonight, I invite you to get a pen and pencil. We're going to do some things that are a little interactive. I hope that you have printed out uh, the, the download that's um, emailed to you, or maybe you have it that you've got in it in your blue envelope at home. So please get a paper and pencil so we can try a few new ways of being in prayer. This week I saw a sign on a church and I thought it was just well said, very well said. It said, COVID is a marathon. Pace yourself with prayer. That's what we're working on this, this week and through time for grace. And let me remind you of our different steps for praying in grace. G is for gratitude. Gratitude and remembering what we are thankful for. Gratitude has a power. R is for regret, lifting up what we might be sorry for so we can be forgiven. And A is for allow. Thank you for all those of you who shared what you might be sad about or angry about at this time. God hears those laments and God gives a good word that they will not last forever. Let us allow ourselves to feel those feelings and move through them with God's good grace. So tonight... We are focusing on the sea for care, but let me begin with a time of prayer together. Let us pray. Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful that we can be a community in Christ, and we are grateful for weather so we can be outside and see tulips and lilacs and see all that God's creation is in, having in bloom right now. And Lord, we all have our own regrets. We all know what's on our heart and what we need forgiveness for. Let us each take a moment to lift up something that we need forgiveness for in our hearts. And Lord, let us allow ourselves, let us allow ourselves to know that you tell us all will be well, even when we're sad, even when we're angry. Let us release those cares to you, and let us remember your steadfast love. Thank you, dear Lord, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who is with us and for us, and who we follow with great love. Amen. This week, as I thought about our C for care, I thought about another word, and that word was shock. Isn't that, that's, that's kind of funny, but let me tell you how I got there. I think that we've all experienced shock in our lives, and most recently. Uh, but, but, but even before these past few weeks, perhaps there was a phone call and you heard of an accident, or perhaps there was news on uh, the television about a devastating hurricane. Shock fills us with dread and with fear, and our emotions just kind of freeze. For me, I, I was shocked when my parents told me that they were going to divorce. I'm sure some of you have had that kind of shock. I was devastated when I learned my father had terminal cancer. And many of you remember last fall when my daughter's friend Ethan died by suicide. I was in shock. Shock is difficult and terrifying, and it takes time to wear off. But I bring it up today because I think we all are in a time of shock waves, 
And I want you to know there is an antidote. There is a way to get through shock. That is by prayer, as we're talking about, and care. That's why we're talking about care tonight. It is the people that surround us and care for us that get us through these times. It was my friends at college that got me through my parents' divorce. It was my dear church family and other friends that got me through my father's illness. And most recently, it was you folks at St. John's and your prayers and your love, along with my dear friends and family that got us through Ethan's death. When we care for one another, there is a power that surpasses all understanding. It heals our hearts, it loosens our shock, it gives us the warmth and care that we need as human beings. Perhaps you're caring for someone. It's acts of kindness that help. It's bringing meals to someone or getting groceries or just giving a call or connecting for someone that's lonely. Acts of kindness and care are what Christians are all about. Jesus says in the book of John, a new commandment I give you, love one another and as I have loved you, you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Perhaps you're receiving care, receiving care. That can be even more difficult, but some of us are vulnerable. Some of us need to stay sheltered at home for our health. Allow yourself to receive care. That's very important. But one way we can care for one another when we're not sure exactly what's needed is through prayer. This week, perhaps you noticed all the flags at half staff yesterday. I wasn't sure why, and I looked it up, and it was for all those who've lost their lives to COVID. Yes, our flags were at half staff. And we all feel a little helpless sometimes to, to care for those folks but we can pray for their families because prayer is God's energy. Prayer gives us God's power to heal and help the world be better. God wants us to pray and says, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. We are responsible for the effort of prayer and God is responsible for the outcome. But God's outcome is always one with steadfast love and grace surrounding us. I was actually thinking about people in my life that I haven't seen for a while. The person that cuts my hair, it's getting kind of long. The person that does my nails. Uh, I just wondered how they were coping and I thought, I thought about sending them a check, and I think I will do that for, for the missing haircut and such. But then I thought, I can pray for them, and that helps me feel better and understand. So it benefits us when we can lift them up in prayer and know that God's Spirit, that Holy Spirit, is alive and there for them. I know so many of you have been ill or been in a difficult situation and you can feel the power of prayer around you. And so tonight, I want to help you with some creative and interesting ways to pray for cares for people, because of course we can name them. And then it's important to be specific about what they may need prayer for. But let me share with you a few ideas. One of them, this one came from Pastor Jeff, is I bet that all of you have Christmas cards you've saved with pictures, or perhaps you just have photos. This is my uh, niece and nephew who are teachers up in Alaska, and this is my brother and his family, and they had a recent wedding. And these are some friends of ours that live in northern Minnesota and like to ski. So, put these cards 
close by in a basket or somewhere where you see them. And when you find a moment of quiet for prayer, just look at those pictures. Look at their faces and pray for them. And remember that God is with you and with them and that we are in the Spirit. Pray with your cards and your pictures. It helps us be more specific. Another fun one, and if you have families, is to get out your post-it notes. They come in all sorts of great colors. And write down names of people or groups of people. You know, perhaps this week you want to remember that the graduates would have graduated and that we'll be actually honoring them in church. Think about our graduates. Perhaps you want to think about people at church like Pastor Jeff. Perhaps you have a relative, a grandparent, or an uncle that served in one of the wars and lost their lives, and this is Memorial Day this weekend, and you might want to remember them specifically this week. And so make yourself a little post-it wall and pray for those folks during the week at dinner time or in your own private prayer time. One of the things that I did when we first started uh, being in lockdown and I wasn't I was feeling kind of lost about uh, uh, how to connect with people is I actually got out our St. John's directory and I just started going through and looking at the pictures and naming the folks through the whole directory and so all of you have been lifted up in my prayers and then I went later I went through the names in the back because some of them weren't in the pictures and it's a way to remember our church community and lift everyone up in prayer. And, you know, I did it a little over some time. I didn't do it all in one day. So um, that's a way to care for others. And the, the last method I want to share with you tonight is one that I really love. And I use it for a lot of different kinds of prayers. Um, but this is where I want you to get out your pen and your pencil and your paper and I want to suggest something because I think that when we say the name of a person and we think about them, we spend some time with that. We're putting more spirit, more energy out for God to listen to, and for God to be reminded to care for that person. And so one kind of fun way to do this is to make a prayer doodle. For instance, I'm going to use my family so I don't really... Uh, have any confidentiality kind of um, breaks here. So I'm going to use, what if I start with my husband, John, and my daughter, Sarah, and my grandson, Elliot. So go ahead and just for, just for starters, name and write down three people that you want to pray for. And now here's the fun part. Because you can spend a little more time in reflection and meditation and just start drawing. And as you draw, think about the person and what they might need and what they might be going through. And here's my daughter and she likes flowers. She's planting a garden, so I'm going to put some flowers around her. Go ahead, just keep drawing. And this is my grandson, Elliot, so I'm just going to give him some fun squiggles. And then, if you like, go ahead and get some colors. And add some color. And you can add to this. You, you can do as much as you'd like. And as much doodling, you can add some fun little doodles and stripes and squiggles to decorate it and by the end you'll have a prayer drawing that you can post and it will help remind you of them but the important part is that while you are drawing you are praying and you are being in the presence of that person and lifting them up to God friends it's important to pray 
And it's important to care for one another. May you be blessed this week by being cared for and by caring for others. And as you remember, time for grace, make time for God and lift up the others in your life to God's good and gracious, steadfast love because God, because God cares for you and God cares for our world. Amen.